Hello, beautiful community. In a feat of triumph, don't think it's a regular situation, but I just felt for the triumph of it, went into a five minute chat from the chair, from the chair, beautiful community, about Musk. A lot of you have a terrible allergy to him, but stick with me for five plus minutes to do a tiny bit of analysis. There are rumors about Trump and uh, Musk already experiencing some simmering tensions, conflict between Trump staffers and Musk. And we've had a couple of remarks from Trump that have been 93% benign, but it's had a 7% element of a poisoned arrow. The remark Trump made about not being able to get the guy out of Mar-a-Lago and the remark Trump made about how Musk is so talented that speaking with him, they couldn't work out what was his main talent, which was 93% benign, but a 7% dig. The way the con, oh, by the way, let me just anticipate an objection. Vlad, why are you talking about this guy? Um, yeah, bleh, bleh, we're stuck. It's not gossip because the guy's one of the most unaccountable and politically powerful humans on earth. So this ain't gossip, I'm afraid. Um, thank you for letting me anticipate and respond to the objection. Beautiful community, let's go on. Mm. So the expectation, I think, of how the clash, if it's a direct clash between Musk and Trump might happen, might be wrong. I think many people expect that It'll be Musk proposing something that makes sense, and then Trump, out of narcissism or indifference or insecurity or um, impulsivity, just rejecting it, and Musk being beside himself and then Trump chasing him away. More likely, I think, is actually that it'll be Musk who is wrong and Trump who is right around how to handle a particular issue or how to do something. Musk will come up with something that looks to him analytically and technically great. Trump will immediately see that there is something humanly or relationally or politically wrong with it and say, what is this? Can't he, can't he see this? And Musk won't get that at all. Musk will just think, I, I don't know what your problem is. This, is. this is good and this is the right way to do that. And if you don't want to do it, then you aren't who you say you were and you aren't really interested in the things you said you were interested in and committed to. So how could you say you wanted to go in that direction but then not accept my proposal? How? It's just so weird. That's Musk. And Trump, what a completely foolish geek. Get him out of here. Um, for not seeing something, right, about... Uh, you know, it being impossible to do something a certain way for human reasons. Let me make a couple of remarks now that are going to be absolutely got by those of you who know a lot about autism and ADHD, autism especially. But um, I'll try to make them without mentioning these um, conditions because um, our level of education about them is so poor that a lot of people get lost and you kind of need to explain what these conditions are first and then you need to uh, make the point. And just to save time, I'm going to talk more abstractly, but those who know will know. Um, one thing that you've got to understand about Musk is that in politics now, he is doing a completely different level of masking that he didn't need to do before. And that's to say that for me, I am masking myself a little bit in a completely different way sitting here because I'm masking physical illness and symptoms, right? 80% of my attention is going on um, just keeping, um, you know, really calm in the face of really weird symptoms. Um, but I'm not at all masking in the way that autistic people mask. Um, and mask is, and he is having to do that on a whole new level now that he's sort of in politics. Because for him, um, not a single smile, not a single bit of eye contact, not a single adjustment of posture is natural. He is always working hard to do that and to get that right. 
So that's important to understand about his experience right now. He's doing that on a level he's never had to do it before. He's kind of enjoying it, but he's also really permanently stressed by it, which also impacts his relationships with the people around him. Next thing to understand is that Musk is extraordinary, actually, at lying in bed at night and thinking about what millions or billions of people need. I don't necessarily mean that all his thoughts about this are extraordinary. I mean, he's extraordinary in how intensely he's able to think in that direction, right? Think of millions and billions of people. You could call this empathy. You could call it something else. But what he's awful at is understanding what an audience that's right in front of him is feeling. What he is awful at is understanding what the seven people he is working with are feeling. And the fact that he's awful at that is much more of a problem when he's a little bit in politics now versus when he was just running his companies. And that's going to just dramatically increase the chances of um, interpersonal misunderstandings that will leave Trump wanting to chase Musk away and Musk feeling utterly bewildered about why he isn't being understood and what on earth is going on in the heads of all these people around him. Now, let me give you a secret about why I've gone on about this so long. And that's because if you are an anti-Trump political actor, you're the Democrats, let's say, you might fail, but you've got to try to win Musk back. You've got to try that when he falls out with Trump. And Anthony Scaramucci has said, and the Mooch is incredibly insightful at the level of personal motivation, especially in connection with power. And the Mooch has said that by 2028, Musk will be a Democrat again. And so it's important to you know, not give up on trying to get him back so that he doesn't, with all of his power and resources, work against anti-Trump political forces. But having said that this is an important aspiration, let me express skepticism about it and push against the mooch, back, back against the mooch a little bit. I don't think the likely outcome for Musk after the Trump-Musk blow-up is that he rebounds back into centrist institutional politics and again softens on the dams. Most likely is an even more corrosive skepticism about all institutions and all politics and even greater desire to orchestrate some kind of revolution to overturn it all. So political radicalization, you could call it moving further to the right, or you could just call it some kind of anti-institutional political radicalization. That's more likely. He'll think, well, if even Trump, who is meant to be a kind of orange wrecking ball against the system, got completely hopelessly co-opted by the system in a way that I again found exasperating and incomprehensible, then this is a nearly hopeless story. and You need to bring some kind of bigger wrecking ball or just give up on it. So that kind of alienation and radicalization for Musk is more likely than uh, rebounding back to the center, having tried um, somewhat sort of anti-institutional populist politics. So that's a little bit of an analysis. We'll be following this story together. Lots and lots of love.